Mr. Griffith, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. All is my pleasure. Yeah. So, Mr. Griffith, over to you. Your analysis of all of this. It has, it has to do, in a nutshell, with good management and accountability. To first, to, again, demonize the whole Trinidad and Tobago Police Service for this, I think it, it is unacceptable. And I'll tell you why. This changed just about three years ago. Um, when I became Commissioner of Police in 2018, early 2019, I got a scathing letter from the Police Service Commission voicing their utter disappointment in my office for the barrage of reports they have seen of police absenteeism in court. And I said, but well, poor me. I just I sat in the office for about two months. And and I was and that is a good thing with that previous police service commission led by Bliss Sequasad, um, Courtney McNeish, Roger Kowal Singh, and Craig James. Every single thing they targeted me to make sure that it was dealt with. And they wrote about police absenteeism for years that this has been going on. The country is aware of it and concerned only because it involves police officers. But there's a major concern where the majority of cases collapse because of police absenteeism. So it took me a year to do research to find out what was going on. And there were three things that, that we had to do. The first, the first involved um, looking at the situation where we had police officers full of, of uh, a basic degree going up against seasoned defense attorneys. They were being destroyed. They did not have the capability. Um, so that's why I had to bring in the uh, civilian attorneys to be able to match with the um, with the seasoned defense attorneys. The second was blatant police absenteeism. Police, there was no accountability. There was no performance was not being measured, and there was no deterrent. So police officers will just not show up in court, and the cases will collapse. Whether it is police based on retirement, absenteeism, being sick, um, being a rogue element, death, whatever, they will not show up. And the third was that there was no there was no deterrent for it. And the third had to do with no backup for that officer based on a, an, an, an a situation where he had no choice. So what we put in place was to ensure firstly we brought in civilian attorneys, highly trained and qualified to match with the seasoned attorneys. And you will see it internationally when it is you go to court matters, the prosecution is, a, is an attorney on behalf of the state, not a first degree police officer going up against a seasoned defense attorney. We started winning cases because of that. Then we had a backup police officer to ensure that when that police officer did not show up based on whatever situation, whether deliberate or accidental, we, we will have a representative there. And again, to, and with, with the season attorneys, we will now have proper file prosecution for the cases. And finally, making sure that police officers will be suspended or disciplined for failure to attend. I think, um, unfortunately, um, previous, this is ACP Prague. Um, uh, he died recently. He was instrumental in getting me to package that. Guess what happened? In 2021, the Police Service Commission sent a commendation to the Office of the Commissioner of Police for 83 to 91 percent reduction in police absenteeism in court. That was massive. So we were we were losing almost every case, and we started because of absenteeism. So it changed. Unfortunately, um, Ola came into the picture. Ola Christopher. They removed the, the civilian attorneys. They said, "Is that police is for police?" The civilian attorneys were no longer there to represent us. They they, they, they removed the backup police officers, uh, and also the police officers. There was no consequence that would have taken place for police officers not attending court. So we have gone right back to what was there pre twenty eighteen. Yes. But it, it can change, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. as I said, this big concern with the country is only because of, it involves police officers. But this has been happening. And the criminal elements, this plays a major part in crime in this country because crime is a product of opportunity. Yes. And if the criminal realizes that if it is, I could commit the crime and there's a 90% chance that when I go to court, the police officer will either not be there, he will be absent, or because of his weakness in the justice system, his the case prosecution file will be very weak in comparison to my seasoned attorneys, I will escape. Yeah. And by us fixing that... It prevented the criminals now because they knew that if they are if they are charged, there's a good chance now that they would be convicted. Yeah. Let me just touch on the statement of the PCA. So it is adding that these investigations refer to matters where police complainants fail to attend court, fail to comply with the court's directives, and fail to comply with their own standing orders. You know, as, as I discussed with uh, another person this week, Mr. Griffith, to me... 
if you are an attorney and has been given the responsibility to prosecute in these matters and similar incidents such as these, then I feel that it should become automatic. And there is the feeling that these uh, police officers do have some level of discretion. Why is that, that a police officer whose responsibility is to, is to prosecute in these matters, he or she feels, well, I don't have to go to court. I have something better to do. The consequences, and that is what I, we had to put in place. We started putting a file every single day. Any police officer that did not attend court, immediately he'll be, he'll be pulled in and dealt with. So the, uh, the police officers realize now that there were consequences for his, act his or her actions. Without consequences, they will know that I can do this. And when it is that I'm involved in the rogue elements, whether I was paid off, whether I was just lazy, I wanted to go down the islands, <laughs> whether it is, the, uh, uh, or even, and sometimes the absence of the police officer is not the fault of the police officer. It may be retirement, it may be leave, it may be debt, it may be, and because of the, the administration in the court and process branch and the police service itself, not realizing that the officer who is supposed to prosecute would not be there days in advance. They did not know until it happened. It was that bad, which is why we brought in the civilian attorneys. There was a very senior one that was supposed to take over the legal department, um, but he moved to the DPP's office. But we had very seasoned attorneys now that were able to package these, the file prosecution. And even, and let me add, um, Marlon, you'll be speaking just about the police officers not attending. But there were also the police officers who were just not trained. If you listen to some of these police officers who attend, who attend um, your interviews, you listen to them, compare them to seasoned attorneys. They will rip them to shreds because they are just first degree attorneys who their basic things is, I am putting it to you. They don't, and it's nothing against them. But there's a difference with someone who's an, who's an attorney who has been trained, tried, tested, and experienced to a police officer who just has a first degree and say, well, I am going in the legal department of the police service. That's what I had to go through. I experienced when I listened to these officers, they did not have a clue how to be able to package proper cases for prosecution to go up against the criminal elements who had major, uh, heavy, seasoned attorneys who knew how to defend the, the, their, their um, clients. Mm -hmm. So it is not just about absenteeism, but it is also packaging it for proper prosecution. So some of the officers will turn up and they didn't have a clue what to do. So you can't blame the criminal justice system. You can't blame the judges. The judges will look at what you have to offer. And if what you have to offer is poor, it is going to collapse. And this plays a major part. So when it is there was a major reduction in crime in that period, it wasn't because of COVID and so forth stated by, by the great SC Kamala Prasad Bissessor, who stated I was a failure. <laughs> Kamala real good, yes. But anyhow, what it had to do, it had to do with management. It had to do with putting systems in place to let criminals be aware that if and when you are charged, we are going to go all the way to the end of the justice system to make sure you go where you belong, which is in Golden Grove. But the criminals, again, understanding that police officers would not do their job. So as I said, to, to double down on it, there were three things that were done, and we got commendation. Imagine 83 to 91% in each one of the nine divisions of reduction in police absenteeism. Yes. My last year assessment by the Police Service Commission actually had that commendation on the report on behalf of the police service, making sure that you have civilian attorneys to work with the police officers who are not trained. You listen to them when they speak, you listen to it on um, Beyond the Tape and so forth, compare them to the seasoned attorneys. You can hear that they're begging, they're asking, they're hoping that they, they talk policing, but they don't have that concept of criminal justice yes. to prosecute criminals. The second is the backup police officer. And the third is to make sure that there are consequences to the police officer so he will be fully aware that failure to do your job and to turn up in court, there will be consequences inclusive of suspension. Now, on Monday, Master Sarah De Silva discharged them. That's the police officers that we're speaking about. After the prosecution failed on two occasions to comply with directions of the court, at the hearing that day, a police prosecutor informed her that he was also unable to provide any update on whether the police file had been sent to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions for a state prosecutor to be appointed. So even the representative they sent on that day, that person was not aware, was not au courant as to what was going on um, with the case. You get the feeling that there is a disconnect something uh, some, somewhere there? Yeah, it is. And again, it's because the, the police officers that were, they were in charge of that, they were just going through emotion. And that is why you need, we, need it. we must have the, 
the civilian attorneys, and sometimes you make them SRPs as well, so they will have full access to the cases and the files because some of them will be prevented from getting the files. And let me add, this here is, is not just important to ensure prosecution, but even the persons who are, who are being charged. These 12 police officers, unfortunately, are going to have to bear this, the brunt of this embarrassment throughout their career because people are going to target them and say, you get away because of a technicality, which is unfair to them. Suppose they were really innocent. So they are, that is going to remain on them rather than going through the justice system to verify whether they, they should have been incarcerated, found guilty, or cleared of their charge. So being, so being um, released based on a technicality due to incompetence, bad administration, and lack of leadership is unfair to these officers. And let me tell you how far back this goes. Even in the Andrea Barrett situation, when these two police of these, these two guys, when they died, not falling off a chair, but when they died, they did they, they um the six there were 63 matters for rape and um criminal activities on women. They, some most of those cases collapsed because of absence of police officers. So these men kept going being involved in sexual harassment, raping a woman, whatever, and then they turned up in court and the police officer was not there. There was one specific officer that on four occasions with the Andrea Barrett situation, they those same individuals who died. They went to Tobago and the officer did not show up. So it, what it also means to the country is criminal elements, no, this, um, had the officers been there, the Andrea Barrett situation may not have taken place because the, these men would have been incarcerated. But 63 different charges, most collapsing because of absence of police officers. This can lead to people continuing to be raped, um, more deaths taking place because the criminals can now get back out to continue their trade of criminal activity. That's how serious this is. It is, was one of the most important things that the Bliss Superstar Police Service Commission hugged me on to get it sorted out. And we took a lot of time, a lot of effort to bring in civilian attorneys, turn them into SRPs, make sure we can have qualified attorneys to match with the, with the um, defense attorneys, make sure we have backup police officers in case a police officer cannot attend, and making sure that there will be consequences for the actions of police officers failing to attend because now there would be a deterrent so that they will know that you will have to pay the price for absenteeism. Yeah. Those three things, as I said, transformed and put an end to police absenteeism and poor case prosecution. To remove all of these things in addition to 100 other things that would have been removed and shut down is what has caused the virtual collapse of the police service and no fault of the police officers, none whatsoever. Yeah. It is the leadership that has I want to speak a little bit about that and the management of this entire situation because I think that this has been going on for a few uh, days now. We did hear a statement um, and it was because of an interview that a member of the media would have done with the uh, DCP, uh, Suzette Martin. So she confirmed that investigation is underway. I see where Ms. Archie, head of the communications unit, is also saying, well, an investigation has been launched and information will be released in due course. I'm seeing where fingers are being pointed at the DPP this morning and asking the DPP to say something um, about the matter. I'm also seeing where People are saying, well, this is not a fait accompli. Of course, these officers can be, can be arrested and charged um, again. So let's look at the management of all of this. From the police service, come right down. Yeah, well, again, that, that file management, unless you have a specific ACP that, as I said, deceased Prague was very instrumental between himself and the, the head of the legal department. Every day, you have to go through the court and make sure to, to verify which police officer was absent. Every day you must do it. So they will provide to the commissioner of police, what well, this is what must be done and what should have been done and what was being done that is no longer being done. So the commissioner will have a list of Eastern Division, Northern Division, five police officers were absent from court um, uh, for the last week, um, constable so-and-so for three cases. Immediately he will be suspended. So the message will filter throughout the police service. If you fail to attend court, you're gonna get a throat bus in local parlance. That immediately put an end to police officers uh, missing court because they were missing court knowing that, knowing that there were no consequences. There was no ACP to, to check when they were absent. It was not going to be forwarded to the, to the DCP administration. It will not be forwarded to the commissioner who will suspend you. So that is the first thing that must be done. Proper file management every single day, any police officer who will, who will miss court. I am very disappointed in the public yet again that this has only become a concern because 12 police officers may be, may be, be beating the system. This is happening every day. Let's go back to the Andrea Barrett situation. Had the police done what was required, Andrea Barrett may have still have been alive. And many other women and men, persons who have been raped, extortion, previous bodily harms, murder. So 
because the criminals continue to escape, whether it's another way of concern only because it's police officers, but we are speaking about hardened, seasoned criminals, gang members involved in violent crime that on a daily basis escape and beat the system, not no fault of the judge, jury, or our justice system, but by failure of the police to have that case management preparation on a daily basis to make sure we're ready for you. So all of the work that the police would have done in intelligence gathering, arrest, charge, comes to naught if it is that you don't go through the final end of the justice system, which is proper case prosecution. So that case management file, I will have to meet with the ACP on a, at least twice a week. Let's see the files, let's see who to suspend. The second is to ensure you're looking and see if this is a police officer that is required to attend. Let's make sure that he has everything that is required for him. And next thing you realize, oh, the man is in Tobago, or the man died. He died. He's retiring just before that, that case. You must have a backup officer. You must have that alternate officer who is going to represent that officer because of exceeding circumstances, whether deliberate or, or accidental, no fault of the officer. And the third, as I, as I mentioned, is to make sure that you have the legal attorneys who have to be part of the case management file, sorry, these the civilian attorneys who will be there to make sure that they will work with the police officers to package the prosecution, anticipating what the defense attorneys for, for, the, for the, um, those persons that are charged will come with. Failure to do that, you're going to get these attorneys who turn up, as I said, turn up on morning edition, and they talk and you listen to them and say, my God, I hope this man doesn't re defend me in court. And no fault of the officers. These are police officers. They are not hard. And that is why it is so important for the police service to reignite what I was doing, putting SRPs, persons highly qualified in specific fields, not just in the justice system, but in DNA testing, cybercrime, IT, human resource, finance, all of these things, you're not going to get just police officers who just go through six months recruit training you bring you have to bring specialists which is actually what was done for with the kate mcmahon situation um that uh when when foreign attorneys were coming here to deal specifically with investigations as it pertain to to um to opposition members of, of the um in the, uh, persons in the opposition but that is what is required at times right is you need to bring ex experts who will be civilians Going back to the present situation, remember McDonald, old McDonald Jacob said it. He said, Gary brought in all of these civilians. We don't need these civilians. Je old McDonald fired all of these experts in these specific fields, inclusive of legal, of, of, um, of our civilian attorneys that were helping the police to package the files for case prosecution. So those are the three things that must be done. It just requires a little bit of leadership, a little bit of work, a little bit of management. Yeah. I think that there is the impression out there and the perception out there, Mr. Griffith, that what has transpired with, with these two matters was a deliberate act on the part of the police in that it, it, it was a situation involving police prosecutors and police officers who are accused of misbehavior in public office and again the perception out there that because of that dynamic the police were hesitant to prosecute their colleagues i i, I beg to differ the, i i work on facts i work on data that's why spock was my was my favorite actor you, you, you can't do things based on perception and and what you believe because as i said these this is a drop in the bucket there have been hundreds and hundreds of cases on a monthly basis that have collapsed involving civilians who are who are, have been seen as gang members, persons involved in rape, murder, um, kidnapping, grievous bodily harm that re that are released on a daily basis for the same reason. So it's only because the police officers have been involved in it that this has become a concern. But as I said, uh, if it is that the, uh, if there is no proper suppose really and truly the officers were just some junior officers were just given this case and they didn't have the capability. And a commissioner of police did not do due diligence to micromanage the situation or to have civilian attorneys or to have backup police officers. All of these things contribute to it. And that is why I said it is very important that rather than us to just cast aspersions on the police service to say it was deliberate, it could very well be based on bad management. But we would have seen what would have caused it to collapse. As I said, I will re-emphasize 83 to 91% reduction in police absenteeism just three years ago. 
And that was, and there was a commendation by to the police service. We put an end to it. The police, service, the police calculator authority could confirm this. This became virtually non-existent, and the criminal elements realized that, which is what caused many of them to re, to back off from committing crime, which is what played a major part to the highest reduction in violent crime in 17 years. Not what was stated by Kamala Prasad Bisesa, it was COVID. But then again, she didn't vote for me as commissioner, but she voted for Ulla. So, you know, she's a judge of good character. Yeah. And But again, it shows that we that putting these systems in place would ensure and minimize the possibility of similar situations existing. You think that the Police Service Commission has uh, the responsibility to say something about this? Oh, definitely. And it, it, the audacity of the, of the outgoing Police Service Commission, I think they are the ones who have imposed ill on us. I will always say that. We continue to condemn and demonize Ula Christopher. What you have seen now, with her having to send Joanna Archie, sending her DCPs, this is how she, her performance was measured by international experts in 2018 when she got, she didn't come in the top 20, yet Judith Jones had the audacity to say that she, she is number one. So she didn't have the ability to come forward and to deal with the matter. What, what is required is for the police to be very straightforward, upright, upfront, to say, listen, it's because of we, we didn't have proper prosecution with the police officers who were not properly trained, they, were not, they didn't have the file, a mistake was made, mistakes happen. Where do we go from here? Rather than condemn Ula and the police service, all that is required is to go back to what was done in, that caused the police service commission to commend the police service in 2021, just three years ago, by putting, by virtually putting an end to it. One, you bring back the civilian attorneys who are highly trained and qualified. The previous attorney general, Faris Alwari, pumped this on to, to me as a commissioner of police. He was very concerned as well. And he assisted me greatly in trying to, to re-establish the police service legal department to have civilian civilians be part of the legal process in the police service. You can't have police constables and corporals with a first degree going up against seasoned attorneys. They will lose. And, yes. and so you, you, you need to bring back the civilian attorneys, make them SRPs. You need to have the backup police officers in the eventuality of a police officer being paid off, being a rogue element, being incompetent, or just or, or, or having a situation beyond his control, Ill, illness, um, retirement, or so forth. And, and third, making, sh making sure that there are consequences for the actions of the police officers. Every week, ACP Prime, ACP Prime will bring to me, these are the officers who are absent. I said immediately call the tribunal suspension. So that and that is the same way it is. You would have seen the transformation of the police service in the public. No police officer will abuse or uh, abuse their position in public because you type for it to Gary and they're up in the commissioner's office. Unless you put consequences, unless you make them accountable, unless you measure their performance, you are going to you are going to get the situation where police officers feel that they could do what they want. They are going to they are going to not even turn up in court and know there's not there's not going to be a problem. Putting, reigniting those three policies yes. would, would go right back to what took place in 2021. Mr. Griffith, I have uh, one minute again and one cr question really um, as it relates to uh, trust and confidence. And I put it in the context where the police service um, has not received very good ratings when it comes to, to trust and confidence. And when things like these uh, happen, I'm sure it, it impacts uh, negatively on the image of the police service. My, my, my take on this is, again, I will fight and defend the Trinidad Tobago Police Service because they are our police officers. I led them. I understand and know what these men can do. In contrast to other countries in the world, um, during covid where other police services, they were involved in abuse of authority, police officers abandoning their post. Not one police officer went, went absent. Not one police officer abused his authority. 30 police officers lost their lives. And public trust and confidence in the same police service with the same police officers was 59% three years ago. It was the highest in all arms of the public service. Now it is the lowest. But what is the difference? It's the same police officers, the same 6,500. The difference has to do with the police service commission and the hierarchy of the police service. Let's knock the, not, knock the police officers. You put systems to measure their performance, make them accountable. We could have probably arguably the best police service in, in this part of the world. Yeah, Gary Griffith, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for your perspective this morning. Bye for now. Thank you, sir.